Brand new gas cans. Is it the latest in safety and engineering? Maybe, but it's horrible. I'm going to show you how to fix it. Years ago, I bought a propane generator. Didn't work that great. And now it doesn't work at all. I like the convenience of propane, but I don't like the inconvenience of a broken generator. So I went out and I bought a nice, shiny new gas powered generator. So now that I have a gas generator, of course I needed gas cans. So I went out and I purchased these Midwest cans, and uh, they were reasonably priced. Paid about $15 a piece for them. Midwest Can Company, five gallon gas tanks. Now these are sporting the quick flow spout. And uh, let me tell you something about this quick flow spout. It is a royal pain. I do not like this spout. Well, here's some of the problems with it, and then I'm going to show you uh, how to make your life a little bit easier. Now, the first thing is, if you notice, if you go to take these off, and you're there at the gas station, you've got that lock. And I'm sure you've seen this before on gas cans. So you have to press that down, and then turn it past that point, and then you can take off the nozzle. All right. Now, if you're familiar with this kind of spout, then you know to operate it, you have to press this red latch in, hear it click, and once that red latch is pressed in, you need to depress the plunger, and you're supposed to do it by putting that on the rim of the car, and if you have it there, it presses in under considerable force. If I let go, it snaps back. So it's spring-loaded in order to get the gas to come out. Now this might be great if you're putting gas into a car and you have something the weight of a car to press against, but it's not great if you have something like a chainsaw or a string trimmer. If you press down hard enough to compress that spring, you just end up pushing whatever it is you're trying to fuel up across the table. So that nozzle lock and the spring is pain in the butt number two. Pain in the butt number three has to do with the filter that they put in the neck of this gas can. Let me show you. They permanently put a filter in this tank to keep impurities out of the tank. But the problem is when you go to the gas station and they put the nozzle in to fill it, the filter interferes with the nozzle and it makes it backsplash and the gas pump thinks that the can is full. So the gas attendant had to click the pump off and on about 30 times just to fill this tank, and he couldn't even fill the other tank. We couldn't get more than about a gallon in it. Okay, first things first, let's go in the shop, and we're going to make improvements to make this much, much easier to live with. I'm gonna start off by removing this little band. Remember, that's the safety that you have to depress if you want to uh, screw this cap off. It's a very easy procedure. Just a little snip right there and a little snip right there. And the first part of our project is complete. It might be just a little bit sharp where you cut. And so if you have any kind of burr, just get yourself a handy dandy utility knife and just Take that edge off just a little bit. That's so nice. So the first modification is done. Now the next one is we're going to remove this horrible, horrible overpowered spring so um, we can depress that latch and just press that down and it will stay shut. Now let me show you what's going on. You press down the release and then you press the nozzle into the barrel, what's happening is that stem has a little o-ring on there. Let's see if we can point it toward the camera. And that little o-ring, when the spring is pressing it in position, no gas can come out. When you push the stem down, 
it releases and it lets the gas glug into the nozzle. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove that little o-ring in there. We're going to take out the nozzle which will give us access to the spring. So you could use a little gasket pick if you want to but this little guy I could just reach in there and I think I can just roll him off. All right, so there's the gasket. Now with the gasket removed, the entire nozzle now can come up and out, and that exposes the monster spring. We're going to remove the monster spring, and he gets to go in the spare parts bin, and then we're going to put the nozzle back in, press down on the button, and then we are going to reattach the O-ring. There we go. And this part of the mod is done. Okay, two down. We took off the safety that gets in the way of removing this lid, and we removed the spring that now lets us Click the button, click and push, and it stays in the pouring position so you can pour it, then when you're done, pop it back out, and that little plastic safety goes right where it's supposed to go. So guys, I know I'm kind of breaking the rules by modifying the gas can this way, and for my needs, it's getting in my way, and I feel it's making me more unsafe. So your mileage may vary, make the decisions based on your needs based on your appraisal of the safety. Let's go out to the gas can and I'm gonna show you how to remove that filter which is preventing me from filling up those gas cans, which is the purpose of the gas cans anyway, right? Okay, let's get it done. Okay, my weapons of choice for this procedure are going to be a thin flathead screwdriver and I'm just going to use a pair of robust needle nose pliers. Here we go, we're going in. So you just want to be nice and easy. Just kind of wiggle it. And you can start the plastic coming away from the can. Can you see that? What if I turn that just a little bit towards the camera? See if you could see that. So I'm just going to go around and loosen it up in a few places. And what I'm going to do too is I'm just going to slip my needle nose in there just to kind of hang on to it there so I have a place to grip. I don't want to knock the filter into the can because there's no getting it out of the can once you do that. So I'm going to hold on here and then I'm going to continue working my way around. And it does look like there's a little bit of, I don't know if it's an adhesive or just a a tight fit, but I do see it pulling away from the gas can. And I'm kind of wiggling it all the way around, and now I'm starting to, to pull forward. And here we go. It is starting to come out. And I'm not too worried about it deforming, because I am not keeping it. see one of the little ears it's there now you want to be really careful because you don't want to deform that lip and it looks like I went just a little bit too aggressively right there so I'm just going to see if I can pull this out the rest of the way just here we go to and fro as you can see this little sucker really in there. So there it is. We don't need it. Now we're ready to put it all back together. Now usually you'd want to line this up down at the bottom so when you put it in the tank that little lip engages but the nice thing about this modification is it doesn't matter where this ends up because now all you have to do press the button, press down the nozzle. So 
when it's time to fill what you need to fill, the gas goes in the thing and not all over your hands and all over you. Well, I think today's project is a good lesson that not everything starts out perfect in life. But if you have your mind, if you have some creativity, and if you have the use of your hands, some simple tools, there's really nothing that you can't fix. I'm Mike, the channel is Mike Fixed It. Be good, be well, and especially around these boys, please be safe. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. I fixed it.